اللہ نزل احسن الحدیث کتاب متشابہ کتاب متشابہ مثانیت قشعر من جلود الذین یخشون ربهم ثم تلین جلود ہم و قلوب ہم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ٹو ندر ایپیسوڈ آف آر فیسنیٹنگ سیریز دا سائنسز آف دا قرآن دس از یور ہوسٹ یاسر قالدی ان آر پریویس ایپیسوڈ وی ہیڈ ڈسکس دا بیگننگ آف دی کمپلیشن آف دا قرآن دیٹ واز ڈن ڈیورنگ دا لائف آف دا پروفیس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ دین دا سیکنڈ اسٹیج دیٹ واز ڈن during the caliphate of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. In today's episode, we will continue from where we left off. Now, as we had said, the first caliph of Islam, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was the person who first compiled the mushaf, i.e. from Fatiha to Nas, in one book. Before his time, it was scattered in different manuscripts, uh, in different writing materials. The situation remained the same for around another uh, 15 years or so. Until in the caliphate of Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu ta'ala an, the, another incident happened which caused Uthman to rethink of another strategy. What was the incident that occurred? Well, the Muslim armies were fighting on the border posts of the Muslim lands in an area that is, to this day is called Azerbaijan. And then too it was called Azerbaijan. And what happened was that the Muslims of Mecca and Medina had met with the Muslims of Syria, Damascus, other places, they had all met together on the front lines. And lo and behold, they were reciting the Qur'an differently. And the reasons for this will become clear uh, in another future episode. But they were reciting the Qur'an, each one from a companion, uh, that, and they had slight differences in their recitation. And these Muslims did not realize where these differences came from. Later on we will learn that these differences came from the Prophet ﷺ himself. But these Muslims were unschooled in the recitations of the Qur'an, and they began fighting one another almost to a physical fight. They began saying that my recitation is better, your recitation is wrong, I know how to recite, you are ignorant, even though all of these uh, companions were reciting, all of these, uh, excuse me, people were reciting from the companions' recitations. Now the companions themselves did not fight, they knew where these differences came from. But their students, those who took the Qur'an from them, they were the ones who didn't know where these differences came from. And so they said, my version of the Qur'an is better. And the other said, no, my version of the Qur'an is better. And so, a companion who was present there by the name of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, he said, O oh Muslims, what are you doing? Are you going to fight like the Jews and Christians fought over their books, that they have different versions and different scriptures? O oh Muslims, this is the one Qur'an of the Prophet wasallam, and these differences are not to the level of different versions, they're different recitations. And so the Muslims understood what was going on, and so they stopped fighting amongst themselves. But Hudayfa thought that unless I do something, unless we prevent this from becoming even worse, then the Ummah will start fighting and bickering, and each one will then try to form a different version of the Qur'an. So he rushed home back to Medina, and he entered in upon the Caliph Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala, and he said, O Khalifatul Amir, O Amir al muminin O leader of the faithful, you must do something to prevent future generations from fighting over the book of Allah. One group says my version, the other group says my version. You must standardize the Qur'an such that everybody writes the same spelling, the same script, the same pronunciation. Everything should be the same. So Uthman ibn Affan called a gathering of all of the companions and Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman spoke to them and explained to them that unless we do something and standardize all of the uh, copies of the Qur'an into one standard copy, then we are going to face difficulties down the line. So all of the companions agreed to this, and so Uthman ibn Affan recalled the Mus'haf that was written by Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, and he ordered a committee to be formed, and this committee was composed once again of the very same person who was in charge of the first one, that is Zayd ibn Thabit, and then as well, three or four other members were added who were very knowledgeable of the Arabic language and of the dialect of the Quraysh. And this time Uthman said, make five copies, not just one. And write it in the spelling of the Quraysh, because the Quran was revealed in the dialect of the Quraysh. So 
write it in the spelling of the Quraysh and make five copies. And so this committee gathered together and within the period of a few months they made five different copies of the same Mus'haf Abu Bakr, they made five copies. And then Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala an sent each copy to one of the famous provinces of the uh, Islamic Empire, the Islamic Caliphate. He sent a copy to Damascus, he sent uh, another copy to uh, Kufa in Iraq. So each of the provinces they got one of the copies and along with the copy he sent one of the famous reciters of the Qur'an as well. So along with a physical copy of the Qur'an, he also sent a famous reciter with it. And then he made a general proclamation, a general announcement all over the Muslim Caliphate. And he said, anybody who has any copy of the Qur'an should dispose of it and come and copy the Qur'an from this original copy. Let nobody just copy an unofficial copy because you don't know where that copy came from. So he disposed of all of the Qur'ans. Now when you dispose of the Qur'an, we are not supposed to just throw it away in the trash or throw it away in the garbage. No, rather we're supposed to get rid of it in a way that nobody can disrespect it. So of the ways you can dispose of it, you can uh, dip it in, in, in water or in the ocean and the ink would dissolve. This is the old ink we're talking about. And of the ways that you can bury it in a deep, far away uh, place until it decomposes. Because remember, the earliest Qur'ans were written on leather or parchment which decomposes. And of the ways is that you can burn it, not as a sign of disrespect, but rather as a, as a protection of future disrespect. In other words, you get rid of it in a way that other people will not be able to disrespect it. And this is an important factor because when we say that the, the, the Qur'ans were burnt by the early Muslims, from the Western mentality, to burn a book generally speaking, is to show disrespect to it. But when you do this to the Qur'an, it is to make sure that nobody tramples on it or nobody throws it away. In other words, you get rid of it in a manner that will prevent its disrespect later on. Now, this was what was done that all of the Qur'ans and all of the uh, Mus'hafs of all of the Ummah were then taken and disposed of and anybody who wanted a Qur'an had to copy it directly from the Mus'haf of Uthman ibn Affan and that is why we call it the Uthmanic Mus'haf. All future Qur'ans, even up to our times, conform letter for letter, word for word with the Qur'anic Mus'hafs. It was a drastic measure but it was a necessary measure. And it is due to Uthman, it is due to the efforts of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved the Qur'an. To this day, there is no different version of the Qur'an. There is but one Qur'an. And this is due to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that He showered on Uthman ibn Affan. And this was done by the unanimous consensus of all of the companions at the time. Now the Qur'ans at that time were written in a very ancient script, it is called Kufic script. And that script was not uh, having dots or vowels on it. The dots and the tashkils were added later on in the second and third centuries of the Hijrah. And this was done to facilitate the readings of the Qur'an. And it is narrated that the first person to add diacritical marks, i.e. what we call tashkil, the fatha kasra dhamma, the first person to do so was a person by the name of Abu al-Aswad al-Du'ali. And Abu al-Aswad al-Du'ali uh, was a person who lived uh, in the first century of the Hijrah and a student of Ali ibn Abi Talib and he used to add dots in specific places to take the place of Fatha Kasra Dhamma. So he would put a dot below the letter if it was a uh, Kasra, a dot above the letter if it was a Fatha, and a dot after the letter if it was a Dhamma. And later on people began to differentiate between the various letters of the Arabic alphabet. The early script of the Arabic alphabet did not have dots on the letters. So a Fa and a Qaf could only be told apart by context. And a Ba and a Ta and a Tha could only be told apart by context. And a Ha and a Kha could only be told apart by context. Later on people developed a more sophisticated script. And so until our times, the most common script that we use is called the Naskhi script. Now I wanted to show you some of the earliest copies of the Qur'an that we have that are still present in our times. And of the copies of the Qur'an that we have, if we can see on the screen here, if you can look at the screen now, uh, it's coming on your screen, we have the copy of the Tashkent Mus'haf. Now this Mus'haf, the Tashkent Mus'haf, it is uh, one of the oldest Qur'ans ever preserved. And it is 
reputed to be one of the Uthmanic Mus'habs, and it is re preserved in uh, Tashkent, which is a province in modern-day Russia. And if we see over here, this is a closer copy of it. We find that this is not paper as we know it, but rather leather. And the leather or the vellum has been placed on papers for our times, but this is the original uh, script of the Uthmanic Mus'haf. We see here a facsimile or a photocopy version. This is how it was written. And if you notice, it is almost impossible for us modern day readers to read this Quran simply because uh, the script has evolved. We need notice here over here uh, the lafz al jalala word Allah. We, here we have laha alaykum, for example. We notice certain words we can make out. Otherwise, generally speaking, it is very difficult to uh, see and read this type of mushaf because we are not used to seeing the script. Another uh, version that we have a close-up version of it, over here we see also a, 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 a manuscript copy of the Tashkent version, which is reputed to be the version of Uthman. And here again we can make out Waman, for example, over here. This is a noon, and there is no dot on it. And the reason is because there were no dots in the earliest uh, manuscripts. Another uh, early Mus'haf that we have is the Husseini Mus'haf, which is present in Cairo. And we notice this is also of the first century of the Hijra, probably 40, 50 Hijra written down. Look at how big it is. Why? Because this is real leather. It is not paper. It is leather. And it has been preserved uh, to this day. And this is a Mus'haf dating back to decades after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and these are the specialist curators that have been assigned to take care of it. To this day this Mus'haf is present, we can see it and compare it letter for letter. Here is another Mus'haf that is found in Topkapi in Istanbul and it is also a ver very early Mus'haf reported to be the Uthmanic Mus'haf. We see it closer uh, over here and the dots we see have a very different structure than our own uh, dots. This too is the Topkapi Mus'haf. This is an example of a mushaf that was written around 80 or 90 Hijra, and it is written in an early script in Yemen, it is called Al-Ma'il. And we can see it is a bit more easy for us, but still quite difficult for us to understand. Uh, and the last one that I wanted to show you, uh, or the second to last, is this is the one that was commissioned by the famous Umayyad Caliph Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik, and he commissioned this mushaf to be written for him. And this is the royal mushaf of the first century of the Hijra. And the last mushaf that we show you is the very famous and beautiful mushaf called the Blue Quran or the Blue Mushaf, written on blue vellum, written with gold ink, with a lot of effort and a lot of, of, of money was spent on this. And this is uh, also from the first century of the Hijra. And this gives us some examples of the earliest mushafs that were written, and they are available to this day. Anybody who wants to compare and compare letter for letter and word for word, they can do so. The Quran indeed has been preserved from the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This leads us to the conclusion of today's episode. I hope you were interested in these mushafs and manuscripts, and you can log online to various websites and see even more pictures. I hope to see you in our next episode. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الله نزل أحسن الحديث كتابا متشابها كتابا متشابها مثانية قشعر منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم ثم تلين جلودهم وقلوبهم إلى ذكر الله